not only this, but we also celebrate, we also exalt in our tribulations. What is this guy, has he got a death wish or something? He wants trouble? What's his deal? Knowing that trouble brings about perseverance, and perseverance, proven character, and proven character, hope. I, I preached a message recently, and uh, the, the premise of it was basically that you stink at the Christian life. And after that, the church shrunk. I mean, nobody liked the message. Not really. But we all stink, don't we? I mean, uh, when it comes to human effort, we stink. And we don't have proven character. We have that sort of that wax fruit character. That character that we bite into and go, ugh, that's, that's fake. Not tasty, not real. It's fake. And so the Holy Spirit has the market cornered on proven character. The Holy Spirit's been proving his character for thousands of years. That's why he gave his life to us, so that his proven character could, could exude through us. But this isn't going to happen without trouble. And you figured that out, right? We're all figuring this out. We get into trouble, things aren't working, then we look for answers. But if things are working, we're not looking for answers. We feel like we got the answers that we need. Everything's smooth and good, and I can. I can. And the gospel says, apart from me, you can do nothing. So Christian growth, then, is us being acquainted with our weaknesses, not us getting stronger. So proven character comes from Jesus. Proven character brings real hope. And hope doesn't disappoint. Why? And here it is, because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts. How do you get what's in to come out? What's in? Love is in. The love of God is in you. For the longest time, whenever I hear the phrase, the love of God, I would think of how God feels about me. I mean, God loves me. You know, uh, 1 Corinthians 13, love is this, love is that. God loves me. This is wonderful. This is how God feels toward me. But here we're going a step further. This is what is in you. If you were to break, be broken open spiritually and look inside of your spiritual heart, what's in there? What kind of nature? What kind of attributes? Who are you? How do you really feel about people? Not feel emotionally, but from the heart. How do you feel from the heart? And what he's saying is, I put my love in you. This, my friends, is why we don't need the law. This is why we don't need the law as believers. Believers don't need 613 things written on stone. We need the love of God poured in our hearts. And so that's why 1 John says the, that his commands now are believe in Jesus and love others even as he has loved us. Absorbing how he has loved us and loving others as we transmit that love. The love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit. When I was a younger Christian growing up, I was scared of the Holy Spirit. I mean, I really liked Jesus, but I was scared of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's the one that's always showing me what I'm doing wrong, and He's kind of mad. I mean, you know, He's convicting and convicting, and I start to feel like a convict because I'm constantly convicted. So, I mean, as a teenager in the church, a saved person, loved Jesus, scared to death of the Holy Spirit. I'm just being honest. Maybe some of you have felt that way too, but, you know, the message of the gospel is that the entire Trinity is for us. The entire Trinity is in agreement. You don't have Jesus thinking one thing and the Holy Spirit thinking something else. The Holy Spirit is fully aware of what Jesus did. Hello? It's obvious, right? Paul calls the Holy Spirit the Spirit of Christ. One and the same. It's a mystery, but they're in agreement. And so what I'm saying is, look at, look at what's poured into our heart. Him, His love, by the Holy Spirit. Not condemnation, 
Not disappointment and disgust, but the love of God. So what can you expect from the Holy Spirit? You know, people get into, oh, I'm afraid to surrender. I'm afraid to surrender. I don't know what God would do. I don't know what God would do with my life. I remember I, uh, I was so afraid to surrender to God that I over-surrendered to God and kind of predicted what He would do with my life, what a surrendered life would look like. I figured a surrendered life was a street witnessing, uh, missionary work maybe in Europe, uh, going into jails and halfway houses and prisons and uh, uh, you know, talking to drug dealers and getting yourself in precarious situations. And that was what a surrendered life looked like because that's what I'd read about, you know, the adventures of this person or that person. And so at 17, 18 years old, I'm not saying, Lord, do with me whatever you want. I'm saying, Lord, watch what I'm going to do for you. And so you see the attitude difference. God didn't come to give us a mission. He came to give us life. And there's a world of difference there. Ministry is not the focus. Jesus Christ is the focus. And He is the same and He is enough with the kids and with the husband and with the wife and with the friends and in the job. And He's enough. He's complete and He's not desperate. The book of Acts tells us that God is not served by human hands as if He needed anything. And if we don't watch it, we're just like those tribes marching around the campfire with our needy God trying to appease Him. God is, if God is God, think it through now. If God is God, then He is full, He is complete, He is lacking nothing. He created us for pure enjoyment, not because He needed us. Now, as we relate to that God, we relate to the God of the Bible. 